I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we're here with the sequel. Today we are going to play with Synthropole again, specifically, versus in an offhand way when I'm washing the yarn. I am going to try to dye some yarn that might bleed, and we're going to see if the Synthropole will help prevent backstaining. So spread of the color while it's bleeding and that being absorbed by the white patches on our yarn. I am really, really curious about this and also really excited to see where we'll end up. Synthropole is a low foam textile detergent that is marketed to dyers and I do believe that it works. Unfortunately, it has a little bit of a soapy scent that I'm not a huge fan of, but I do think that it probably works better for washing your hand dyed yarn in the sense that it probably agitates the fiber less as it's both a uh, low foam and I think that the pH of it is pretty neutral as well. The marketed directions involve a washing machine, which clearly I'm not going to do, but I do tend to use a tiny blip of it in washing in the times when I've tried it. and. I mean, I, I have no reason to not like it. The real question for me is not whether I should use it and continue to use it, because I think that I will maybe not all the time use it, but I will use it a lot of the time. And when I run out in, you know, five years, I'll probably buy some more. Uh, but the real question for me is whether I recommend it for new dyers, whether this is something that you should get. It is a little bit more expensive than dish soap, but not outrageously so. So I'm still undecided if this is something I would consider a game changer, like getting a spin dryer that makes a huge difference in my wash and dyeing journey. And another thing, I suppose, we're still trying this with acid dyes again today. The real a bigger test is I need to tie dye a t-shirt or use fiber reactive dyes and try it there. So expect a part three coming up. But today we're going to do it with acid dyes again. But yeah, I think that something that does involve a lot of washing, that might be where we see more of a difference. But anyway, today we're going to look at backstaining, which is also something we should look at with fiber reactive dyes. So which I happen to be playing with soon. So, haha. -ha. <laughs> I'm still thinking, I'm like, I have some tie-dye videos coming up. So maybe when I do the washing there, I have that slow and I film uh, the Synthropole video as I'm washing that yarn. We'll see. But today we are gonna use uh, some hot fuchsia from Jacquard and some Dharma Purple Pop, which is the dye we used last time. I'm pretty sure that that fluorescent pink pigment in the Purple Pop is the same one that is in Hot Fuchsia, which is why I am bringing that in. Today, we will dye 200 grams of yarn. This is Knit Pick Stroll, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. Uh, and if you want to learn more about the yarn or some of the other tools and things that I'm using in this video, I do have affiliate links down in the video description. In my 12 quart pot, pot, I have this much water with one tablespoon of vinegar so far. I would estimate maybe it's between like eight and 12 cups. Let's go ahead and add a total of six. So that's four. Because I added one and then had to do a reshoot because that happens. Uh, <laughs> All right, and to our pot, we're gonna add our purple pop. Let's see how much we have. We've got one. That's exactly two tablespoons of purple pop. And I will rinse this out and go ahead and pour the rest in. Here we go. Purple pop is one of those colors where a little can go a long way. Okay, now with our hot fuchsia, I am also gonna do, I think, just two tablespoons. Stir that up. Now I'm gonna come in with our 200 grams of stroll. Slowly lower this down, but to a point. So I'm stirring as I go down, and you can see the color's breaking, but that there's a lot of pigment left. So slowly going down until we can't, oh dear, can't go down any further. And you can see I have attached 
of the yarn via a zip tie to my tongs and if I am very careful uh, hopefully we will maintain that white uh, for this project and we can come and check carefully hopefully without splashing the color uh, in the rest of the pot with a spoon as needed but now we are still heating things up uh, so I am going to I guess let this heat for 30 minutes but then we'll come back it has been about 30 minutes and there's a little bit of pink left, but most of the color has absorbed. Um, having some amount of pink left is fairly normal. We also have a little bit of color wicking up, uh, but there's been no dye on that end. Actually, there's also no acid up on that end. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to turn off the heat and I'm going to let this cool completely, maybe even overnight, to let those pinks absorb. And who knows, maybe we won't get bleeding even now. But there's a chance, there's a chance. And even if there's light bleeding, like what we saw last time, there's a chance that uh, with my tap water slightly acidic, we could see some back staining. So I'm very curious and I will see you probably tomorrow. It is the next morning and the dye bath is almost completely clear. Almost. I am going to leave the one that we'll do with the synthropole in here. I'm going to remove one so that way I can just keep the other safe and out and let's go wash it. Okay, we are going to start with some dish soap. And the thing I'm going to do differently is right after turning on the water, I am now going to add the dish soap. Uh, and so normally I do a rinse without any soap at all, but in case the back staining would happen in that first rinse if we see bleeding, I wanted to add, I, I just wanted to have soap sooner. And oh no, <laughs> we might not have very much bleeding at all, um, which I mean isn't something I should really complain about. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, okay, there's a little bit of some pink. Not very much. I mean, I shouldn't be complaining about, yeah. Basically, at the end of the video, we'll compare the color in this end when it's dry uh, between the dish soap, the synthropole, and then we'll have like a bare stain to see if we see any back staining. But, unfortunately, the amount of color that's really not very much bleeding at all so I think that I need to add more dye <laughs> to try to get some plank bleeding or really I think that I need to just shift the experiment altogether. but I'm gonna let this soak for 15 minutes I'm both happy and disappointed. And so I think that to do a part three of this <laughs> and to try again, I need to do a completely different setup. I will be doing this with tie dye or fiber reactive dyes the next time I try it. Something that we know bleeds a lot, something we know where back staining can be a problem. And so I'm glad I tried it again, even if we're probably not gonna get conclusive results. Now, I will have some heavy bleeding that I used with the synthropole to insert at the end of the video. I didn't test back staining there. While this was on the stove, I was washing some other yarn and there was bleeding. So I went ahead and washed it with synthropole and maybe it helped things go a little faster. But again, I'll insert that uh, when I'm done with all the washing of this purple pop yarn. So we'll try this with fiber reactive dyes or tie dye or something that I know is a much bigger bleeder. Basically, cotton. <laughs> okay, it's been 15 minutes and I think that I've given as much of a chance for back staining as possible. Uh, it's unclear if we had any. We will, if there's any, it's a hair. I mean, this is not that much bleeding uh, but if it didn't bind then that's also good news my tap water is slightly acidic which is why 
sometimes in some situations I might have less bleeding than other people, but also could be why uh, maybe I could see more backstating than other people. So that I don't know. Uh, but now I am really just going to rinse. But maybe I should be doing more soaps. I've always been afraid. You know, this this could like change maybe the way that I wash. And I think other dyers, when they rinse, they soak the yarn in water and soap and then rinse out the soap. And backstaining has always been a fear. But that's a lot less color. Maybe, maybe soaking is a way to go. It would be more annoying for the filming portion of the washing stage of yarn, which as I mentioned before, washing the yarn is my least favorite step. Uh, and when I dye a lot in a day for multiple videos, I do want to wash each one separately so I can show it in the video. But if I'm dyeing massive quantities, huh. And this was just this soap. We haven't even done the center pull yet. But I am not seeing any more bleeding. So I tried. I tried to make a color that would bleed. Uh, it didn't. I'm going to put this through my spin dryer and we're going to wash the other one with some Synthropole. But, you know, the control, I, I suppose I could have done a control with no soap at all, but I am wanting to compare just a random dish soap to the Synthropole. But yeah, maybe I should just change my washing technique overall. Okay, for this next one, where I'm gonna use the central pole, I made the zip tie a lot tighter, so that way I can tell them apart. And I am gonna pour in a tiny amount that maybe is a little too much, but I am now going to add the yarn to the pan. And we'll see if we start to see some bleeding. The water is still, uh, I guess it's not, it's cold, like I, it's not warm water, <laughs> but I'm not really seeing much bleeding right now at all. Like, okay, there it comes, so like a tiny bit. I think next time I see a lot of bleeding somewhere, <sighs> I don't know. I, I Like, maybe I need to try this with a blue, but again, no. I need to try this with fiber reactive dyes where we know we have a lot of bleeding. I am, there's a tiny bit of pink. I'm gonna leave this in here. I guess actually we will tighten the zip tie at the end. I want it to be loose so that way if there is back staining, <laughs> we stain. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna let this sit for 15 minutes and then we'll finish washing it. I know maybe I should go for 30, but I'm just doing 15 because normally I wouldn't let the yarn soak in that first rinse anyway. So we'll see. It has been 15 minutes. Aha. And we'll, we're seeing a little more of that color come out from this soak. Well, let's see. I'm going to gently squeeze out. I mean, I'm not seeing back staining. That doesn't mean, though, that it isn't happening. So, yeah, I mean, there have been a lot of other great suggestions in the comments of things to try. And this includes, you know, knitting a swatch um, and things like that. I suppose another solution could be at the washing stage if it's not bleeding to remove the yarn and add a little bit of dye and then see with soap in there and see if we get back staining. That's also not really a completely fair <laughs> comparison. So yeah, I, I'm not sure thus far if there is like, we're gonna need to try this with a fiber reactive dye uh, or tie dye or something at some point. I think that that's really the only way to do it. Uh, like the dish soap, I'm not sure because my camera did stop recording at one point. I'm not sure if this stopped bleeding faster 
than the other one. Oh, at this point, I will go ahead and make the zip tie really short again. It's unclear to me. I don't think that there's much difference at all between the two things. I know there have been pieces where we've seen back staining before, and I think that's why I'm feeling frustrated <laughs> because I can't get it to happen on purpose. Goodness gracious. The good news is that we've got some fun yarn that isn't damaged. So, I mean, that's great. <laughs> anyway, I am going to go put this through my spin dryer, hang it out to dry, and we'll come back. Or actually, now I'm going to go show you a case where things were bleeding, and I used a scissor pull. It wasn't no side-by-side -side comparison, but I did film it. <laughs> and then after that, we'll come get our conclusions. All right, friends, we did it. We did it. We have, we've got bleeding. This uh, is from another video. And I was filming a time lapse watching anyway, but we've got a lot of bleeding. So here is what we're going to do. I am going to add some slightly warmer water. Uh, the culprit, I think, is Dharma True Turquoise. We're gonna add, that's probably a fair amount. We're gonna add some center pole here. We also add vinegar. The water is still cool. The water is still cool and I added enough that it is definitely foamy. Actually, there's not very much bleeding anymore. So the center pole won't help set the color, but maybe it'll mean that we have to do fewer rinses which is what I am hoping. So, okay, there's there's a fair amount of bleeding. So part of me wants to um, empty the water right now, um, but that is not what I'm gonna do. And I'm also not gonna add vinegar yet. Um, I am going to leave the yarn in here in its soapy, soapy way to sit for about 30 minutes. And I'll add, I'm about midway through dyeing that purple pop stuff right now. So <laughs> the timing was kind of perfect. It has been 15 minutes and I am very curious. I think that there's something in the turquoise that's not that soluble. Uh, because at one point in one of the cups I did see some sediment. But let's see now how we are doing. There's still clearly soap in here. And of course, I'm not comparing and contrasting this because I only have this batch here. Just a little bit. And I'm changing the water again because that could have still been, you know, we've now diluted whatever is still in here. I mean, I would say that it's paler. Uh, let's go ahead and add a tablespoon of white vinegar. See, the thing is, if the bleeding is happening, happening because of something that is not soluble, then the vinegar isn't gonna like magically fix that. Uh, but it's definitely better than it was. It's now in the barely there category versus being very bright. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if the center pole is magic is the magic answer or not, but I'm gonna let this soak and then we'll rinse a couple more times. Okay, five minutes later, soaking in the vinegary water, and I'd say we're probably pretty good. So, there was, there was a point, and I don't remember if I used this color, um, there was a point where I had like an issue where colored blues were bleeding, and then I had to go and reheat it and then it was solved. So I don't know if this is a similar kind of issue, but then the center pole helps like pull it out into solution, so then we can remove it. But 
We are good. We are very good. I can put this through the spin dryer now. And so I probably won't talk about this one again, but I just wanted to show another example. Here is the dry yarn that we dyed with uh, certainly some purple pop, and now I'm forgetting if it's hot fuchsia or fluorescent fuchsia. I don't remember if it's the Jacquard or Dharma one, but either way, it's a bright pink that is prone to bleeding. And we did see bleeding with both of these examples, whether we washed with dish soap or with Synthropole. But in either of the dish soap or Synthropole cases, and don't forget, I did tighten the zip tie for our Synthropole one. I don't really see evidence of backstaining. Certainly, I think that this color here is identical between the two. So I was hoping, well, actually, I don't know what result I was hoping for. Uh, there was a chance that because we have, I have slightly acidic tap water, when we saw some of these pinks bleed, that this bare yarn could have soaked up that color and then had a bit of a pastel stain. The fact that it didn't means that, uh, well, I, I'm not entirely sure actually. It's possible that either soap prevented it. I did not have a control here of a no soap. I added soap to the beginning in both cases because I really wanted to compare the dish soap and the synthropole versus comparing soap versus no soap. So not having a detectable difference, and now I'm like looking, trying to save its shadows. Yeah, I don't see a detectable difference. Not having a detectable difference isn't a bad thing at all. The setup was a good idea to leave some white behind uh, so that way maybe we could see some back staining there. That was a very good idea. Ooh, one question I have though, was there vinegar in the white portion uh, before we rinsed it? Maybe not. I mean, I'm sure you could come up with scenarios where uh, we might have been able to see vaccine on one or the other, but the important thing here is that, can you get by without Synthropol? Yes. Are there circumstances where I think Synthropol would be valuable to have on hand? Absolutely. I think having a low foaming soap that is neutral, that is intended for washing dyed fibers is good. It does dry out my hands. It has a scent I don't particularly love. So you can stick with dish soap, but there's a chance that I will run into a circumstance someday where I feel like the Synthropole really does make more of a difference. But I think the thing that did make a difference is me shifting my washing technique a little bit. When I see color bleeding, let it soak in the water with the soap for a bit. That does seem to reduce the total number of washes that I have to do. Maybe. I don't, I haven't really had a heavy bleeding situation yet <laughs> since I've been trying these comparisons. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope that you found this video interesting. And I know that I have, and part of me is like, ooh, I really like the Synthropole. I mean, I like that it foams less, that's really good. I, again, don't like the scent or that it dries my hands out, but there are perks that I can see potentially to it. And so I will probably randomly use either Synthropole or dish soap depending on my mood in the future. Now, I have already started filming a Synthropole versus dish soap part three using tie-dye. I wanted to try something that would bleed more. I wanted to try something there. I knew there would be more washing to try to get a feel for it. So if you are excited for that video, give this one a thumbs up and drop a comment down below. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss other riveting experiments when it comes to soap and washing yarn or dyeing yarn in general. <laughs> If you enjoy the content and want to support the channel, uh, I do have a Patreon and Etsy shop. You can find the links to everything down below. Thank you so much for watching.